everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot Limode and today on Hot Limode we are coming to you with the VMA's 2020 Ew, I just spit. Red Carpet Roast and Review. But a roast. I haven't done one of these in so long and honestly I felt very devoid of like a recent off the cusp red carpet. Coronavirus has taken a lot of things from us and the red carpet is one of them. Mind you, it's one of the lesser things that it has taken from us, but still. Coronavirus took it from us and I'm mad about it. We're back. We're doing the VMAs because it is a virtual red carpet, sort of, kind of. We don't really know how it actually went down. Like some people think the photos are Photoshop, other people think that they actually showed up to things. Who knows? But let's just get into it because I am excited. Now first up is Ariana Grande and she is wearing Mugler. Now this is a custom Mugler look because honestly we couldn't find this little leather look on any of the runways and Ariana is quite a custom girl. I'm pretty positive for one of the VMAs she wore custom Zach Posen so this makes sense. It's sort of a very Casey Cadwalader for Mugler style. It is a turtleneck long sleeve, short little sort of handkerchief skirt and it's full of seams, like seams everywhere, like seams here, seams here, seams here, there's a hem here, there's a hem here, there's a hem here. Sorry, if I slip out at any point, I apologize, and I can at these day. She's a little bit silky and slippery. In reality, I actually really like this for Ariana. It's a little bit edgy, it's a little bit, I don't want to say grunge because it's not really grunge, but it just feels a little bit rock and roll for Ariana, but it's still very sleek, it's still very chic, and I like the simple cut. You know, Ariana to me is not some complicated, crazy, over-the-top, ridiculous fashion icon. That's just not her. But I feel like this sort of channels the coolness, the trendiness of Mugler and the moment that it's having. It takes the aesthetics of Casey Cadillac's Mugler through the stitching and combines it with a cute little silhouette that feels very young and fresh and funky and cute and sweet and, you know, pretty. But, you know, adds that little Mugler sexy gothic style that, you know, we sometimes enjoy. She's also wearing a square toed platform form Giuseppe Zanotti heel and like that is a damn thick heel. She is chunky yet funky. It doesn't perfectly go together but I also don't hate it. It's fine. I'll deal with it. I like that it's a square toe. I like that it's very very thick and chunky. Overall it's not the worst thing I've ever seen from Ariana Grande so I will take it very gladly. Next up is a look that features Ariana Grande and Lady Gaga when they were performing at the VMAs. Now she is wearing a look that is very reminiscent of the style that she wore in the Rain On Me music video. Here it's this purple sort of bralette crop top bandeau with a quite, you know, go date full skirt that's kind of short. It's like a cocktail full skirt. She's wearing a black face mask. We have to sand. We love that. That is very important. Social distancing. That's what you need to be doing. And honestly, overall, was it very super duper exciting? Absolutely not. But you know what? Performance wise, it's referencing their Rain On Me music video. I understand performance looks are never going to be the same as a red carpet look. So it's good for what it is. Next up is Bella Hadid and Bella Hadid was giving out the Tricon Award to Lady Gaga and here she is wearing, I don't know, but I do know that it was styled by Carlos Nazario who is one of the up and coming fashion stylists of the world. Now she's wearing this sort of sheer top with a sort of darker sheer black bra with straps and then it has a black, you know, opaque bar running through and it has sort of sleeves that are fingerless and then it's a really definitely not fitted men's suiting pant and a little strappy shoe with some embroidery or sequins or something. In reality, is it my favorite look I've ever seen Bella Hadid in? No. Do I think it's terribly exciting? From the top up, yes, but the pants throw me off. Like, I get it. It's Bella. Like, she could wear anything and she looks great, but no offense, not even Bella can pull off those pants and sell them to me. The top, though, I'm obsessed with. I like it. I'm interested, but something about the pants, no. I'm okay. Thank you. Next up is BTS, and they were performing their new hit song, Dynamite, and honestly, the boys are all wearing Gucci, and like, they look dynamite. Like, kapow. I was very interested, and I'm not really like a big Gucci 
person like that. Now, it's a lot of sort of Gucci tailoring, which I think, you know, Gucci tries to really push a lot of like the male celebrities to be the Gucci tailoring ambassadors, like Harry Style was one. They're wanting BTS to possibly be maybe the face of the Gucci tailoring campaigns, and I feel like this is a pretty good job done. So from the far left, I love this teal jacket. It's really, really great. The white shirt underneath, it's unbuttoned. It has like a loose tie going on and a simple sort of flare gray pant and some sort of black shoe. In reality, I like the pop of color. I like the orange bouncing off of this teal or seafoam green or aqua marine. I don't know what color it is. Listen, I'm colorblind today. And I like the flare pants. Very Alessandra McKay like Gucci. Next up, we have this gray look. It's a light gray blazer, a little white shirt, some sort of striped tie, a little gray pant, and again, black shoes. This one, not that interesting, not that exciting. Like, I like the color of the blazer, but that's really it. I love the full blue suit. It's giving me very Mad Men. And besides that, I don't really care about it that much, but like it's giving me very referential, old school, very Gucci tailoring in the way that like a straight man is gonna buy some Gucci tailoring, like that's what I'm getting here. And the other thing that we should probably know before we finish this is that the boys were like performing they were really like going at it. They were like kicking and twirling. It was great. I really enjoyed it. It was very interesting to see a sort of Gucci tailoring style be performance wear. And not that I don't think you can't like perform in tailored pants, but a lot of the times I think clothes are like meant to fit to you with tailoring and like very, you know, bespoke tailoring. That's like the haute couture of tailoring. Well, not really. It's sort of like men's haute couture of tailoring. But it was really cool to like watch them like kick and twist and dance and go down and go up. It was very like, ooh, if I did that, my pants would rip right up the ass crack. But for them, it worked and maybe it was a great way for Gucci to highlight that their suits are not just for standing there and looking pretty. You can move and groove and dance and, you know, do whatever you need to do. Now, in the middle, I love this. This is probably one of my favorite looks. It's very sort of like tweedy in this blazer, a little white shirt, tie. And then I love this sort of semi-flare pant and this light caramel. It was very nice. It was very chic. Very reminds me of like my grandfather, but like my grandfather if he was very chic. No offense to my grandfather, but like this is chicer. The next is that black vest and black flare pant that I hate, that I can't stand, that needs to go. The problem with these like performance wear styles is that there needs to be some room for the men to move and groove. And I think in a way the cut of some of the pants isn't the strongest. Like I really don't think it's the best style and in certain pairs you can see that they're a little bit baggy they don't really fit fantastically so that's a problem also like wearing a vest no i hate it despise it i think it's the ugliest thing in the entire world mm -mm, we're good next up we have another vest in all gray here and a flare pant and again the problem with the pants i'm seeing it you can see all the wrinkles here that's like upsetting to me but i do feel that the closed vest is better than an open vest you know what i mean like it, there is a difference it does seem to look like it fits better when it's closed whereas the the open vest it's giving me very like dad dad vibes and you don't want that that's not the vibe but the gray it's okay there's a little bit of a flare there so i respect that i'm interested in that finally on the far right is the best vest look this blue is beautiful uh the cut of the pant is not the most atrocious but like it's still a little bit rough but it has this nice button-up vest. It fits, it looks good. Again, this is a good reiteration of button-up vest, keep it closed, thank you. We don't need to see all of that open. Got it? Like, not shaming anybody for anything, but it just looks better when it's closed up, you know what I mean? All in all, wasn't so mad about BTS. I know that they're, you know, I know that they get some flack if they go a little bit like too avant-garde for Western audiences, but like fuck that. I want to see BTS go crazy, ridiculous, over the top, insane. Like that's what I want. That's what I want to see. Please. Next up was Chloe and Halle, and during their pre-show performance, they wore these like silver metallic, very Mugler-esque body suits with gloves and knee-high boots and honestly i loved it chloe and hallie to me very rarely do anything wrong they really do try they really do like go above and beyond their stylist arena acres also is beyonce's stylist so like very rarely is it 
off. And here, I feel like it channeled that sort of old world, new glare, bionic style. Mind you, it needed to be performance wear, so it's not as, you know, rigid and structured and probably as luxe as those sort of earlier haute couture styles, because again, it's performance wear, it needs to move, it needs to groove, it's probably in a fabric that's a, you know, mixture of like some sort of elasticy style, something that allows you to move. That's important. But in reality, I think it was a good sort of harkening back to iconic styles. We love a little bit of a reference. I think they looked great and the performance was wonderful as well. So shout out to these women. Next up was my fave. I want to call him my boyfriend, but that's very presumptive. DeBaby. Now DeBaby is wearing some sort of like Louis Vuitton fur shorts in the monogram. He's wearing like a fur supreme jacket that is open, a little Dolce & Gabbana hat and like no, come on. You're better than this. You're better than this, baby. We know. We're, we're on the same page. You know Dolce is not good for you. It's not good for anybody. I don't love the Balenciaga Triple S sneakers here, though. Like, not my fave style moment going on. It just feels very, like, brand, 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 brand. And I don't love that. You know what? I'll be honest. I love the Supreme fur coat. Very good, very chic, very cool. I like the matching of the black and white Louis Vuitton shorts. Like I felt like it referenced the Supreme Louis Vuitton collaboration. But I think the styling of the accessories, the hat and the shoes could have been much, 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 much better. Next up is Doja Cat and she is wearing Versace. And I hated this. I'm so sorry to Doja Cat. Like, congrats on, you know, best new artist of the year. Amazing. Say so. Love it. Here for it. But this Versace look? Terrible. Hideous. It was hideous on the runway. It's awful here. Now, this, I believe, is in the, like, classic Versace chain mail. Now, Gianni Versace actually, like, created his own chain mail fabrics way back in the 1980s so like we love that that's great and obviously here it is sort of like printed on or dyed i don't know how you dye chain mail but it's the, the motif is on the actual dress i don't like the cut of the dress like i like the deep plunge but i don't think like the triangle bra cups here with the the straps is really really great i hate the embroidery on the dress the little flowers all over it look terrible i don't think anybody is able to like see what those are unless you're really looking up close and personal and i hate the hem the skirt whatever they did it's some sort of like i don't even know i don't i don't know what you call it but it's frilly it's not like straight and structured it's more you know full of fringe of beads and shit and it's giving me like very bad prada vibes. Prada is like rough, but it's meant to be rough. You know what I mean? Like it looks ugly, but Muta Prada is like, haha, this is what I'm doing. I'm making it look ugly. And then you're going to think about whether or not it's supposed to look ugly because it's supposed to look ugly, but you don't know if it's supposed to look ugly. Like that's her thing. Here, this is giving me Prada, but like knockoff Prada, like, oh, we're going to try to do that, but doesn't look as good. And that's what I'm getting here. I don't like the back of the dress either. I don't really feel like it hits in the way that we want. And listen, uh, there's not many Versace looks recently that I think would look good on Doja Cat, but I feel like there are other brands besides Versace that she could start to work with and sort of move with. Like, she's, she's getting pretty big. She's moving in the proper direction for, like, a sartorial transformation, and I feel like Versace is one that we should leave in the past. Like, don't, let's not do that again. We're good. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye, Versace. Then Doja Cat did perform at the VMAs and she wore this redonkulous bodysuit that was full of like scales all the way up the side and had like a glow up breast and punan and I kind of loved it. Like it was very performance wear, it was very sort of ridiculous, but I felt like it was a little bit dramatic, it was a little bit over the top, it was a little bit crazy. And I feel like that's what, you know, the VMAs is about. Like give us something exciting give us something different and this to me felt very like technologically advanced so good for doja cat she's definitely trying and i'm excited to see what comes in the future a little cameo from drew barrymore because she's doing a talk show i believe and she's wearing celine here and like i don't like the look but to me it makes sense that drew barrymore is wearing the celine look it's very like sort of 80s late 70s style a slimmer and, you know, I think Drew channels it well. It's giving me very, you know, what Drew Barrymore's parents would have worn when she was coming up as a young teen tot celebrity baby child, you know? Do I think it's great? No, but is it there? I guess. Next up is G-Idol, and this one was rough. I'm so sorry to them. They deserve far better than this. 
that multicolor motif dress. No, she's just she's rough. She's ugly. The, the, it's just not exciting. It's not interesting. Next up is a simple red strappy look. I hate the stitch through the center. Despise that. I think it's terrible. I think it totally throws off the dress. I hate when people do that. Next up is one of those like two piece and a biscuit styles. It's some sort of top. Don't care. Cropped. And then it's that skirt. And you know the skirts that like have the little ruffle that starts here and then comes all the way up the side to the top of your hip? Hate that. Despise those. They are terrible. If you own one, burn it. I know that's not really sustainable, but burn it. And if you don't own one, don't ever buy one. Thank you. This has been a hot limo PSA. Next to her is very Little House on the Prairie K-pop. And I don't like that either. It's just... Mm, no, I hate the motif on it, the print, the pattern, whatever is going on. Next, it's like bad John Batista Valley threw up on her. There's like some straps. And you know what? It's not just John Batista Valley, it's like Erdem. And John Batista Valley got really fucked up at a nightclub and just said, Ugh! <laughs> like, both on this poor woman at the same time. It's terrible. Uh, the straps with the strings, ooh, no. The off the shoulder, ooh, no. Uh, the print, ooh, no! And finally on the far right, I don't even know that, what that is. It's, I, I can't tell if that's a jumpsuit or a dress, and that's when you know you have a problem. Next up is Jaden Smith, and he wore this beautiful woven jacket. It has this floral motif all over it. It's very paint by numbers kind of vibe going on, but I really like it and wish I own this jacket. Also, nobody's been able to clock where it's from or like find the credit for it. So I have this weird feeling that Jaden Smith like had this made for him, which makes me think he's a hundred times cooler than I already think he is. I love that he's wearing a simple jean. I feel like that works really, really well with it. And his sneakers match the jacket. And like, this is all I'm asking for people. If you got a jacket that's crazy colors, find a sneaker that matches it. Very cool, very efficient, very chic. Listen, it's like a New Balance sneaker. I don't even care about that part. Uh, like, I'm just happy that they match. In reality, this jacket is some sort of knit. It is beautiful. It has like a real structure to it. I like the fact that it's piped with the white at the end. So like you still have the motif, but it cuts it off as the jacket sort of comes together to close at the front. This was one of my favorite looks of the night. It's a great example of like, you don't have to wear like Balenciaga or, you know, Givenchy or Versace. Like you can actually find a cool designer or find a cool whoever to make something for you that works really, really well and is very cool, very different, very, I don't wanna say avant-garde, because it's not really avant-garde, but it's just out there in a way that we weren't expecting. And I think it's crisp and clean and classy and cool. And I love this for Jaden. Next up is Joey King in Versace. I hate this, despise it, can't stand it. I think it looks blah, it's just blah. You know what I mean? It gives me very Balenciaga vibes. It's like ugly prints, but because I know it's not Balenciaga, it's Versace, it's like, oh, that's just an ugly print because they picked out an ugly print. If it was Balenciaga, I'd be like, oh, like Balenciaga picking out an ugly print on purpose. This makes sense. But Versace, I think they picked that print out like, because they were like, wow, this looks so good. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. I'm not, I'm not living for it. It's just a really simple cocktail dress. I do like the fact that it's fitted at the bust. I like the sleeves. And the skirt does definitely jut out in a way that's not just, you know, bodycon. It really does seem to have some sort of shape. So that's really great. I like the silhouette of the dress, but I think print, yikes. I just don't love it. But I do like the fact that her stylist matched the red heels to the red in the dress. I, I Joey King to me is actually very experimental. She's very out there. She definitely tries really hard and normally it pays off very, very well. So I'm not gonna be super duper mad about this because normally you, I have like a, a good backlog to fall back on of like, oh, Joey King, like, you know, if this keeps happening, I'll be upset. But right now I'll take it. I expect Joey King to do better in the future. Here's to it. So next up was Kiki Palmer, who was the host of the night, and here she is wearing Aria. Now Aria was a very popular brand to be wearing at the VMAs, and I think it's important to talk about Aria a little bit because they are one of the younger, newer, up-and-coming New York brands, and their signature sort of bling piping and styles, as well as their quite ridiculous avant-garde hip 
dresses are definitely becoming more and more commonplace on red carpets and in fashion in general. Here, Kiki is wearing quite a simple look from Area. It's a little strapped, you know, piped in Swarovski crystal sort of style look. It's a very simple cocktail dress with a slit and a bow over the slit. From what I believe, it seems like Kiki was sort of trying to straddle like being super duper fashion and also being somewhat approachable as the host for the night. So I like that she's wearing area. I do think that maybe there were a little bit more, you know, avant-garde and ostentatious looks she could have worn. But also I understand that at the same time you're trying to like keep the audience interested. You don't want them staring at you the whole time as you're hosting when, you know, you're supposed to be giving attention to the other attendees and nominees for different awards. But in the future, I'd like to see Kiki like punch it up a little bit more. I feel like she really could go hard and over the top and crazy and cool. And I'm excited to see some of that in the future. Next up is this whole Lady Gaga montage that we're gonna have to discuss. There were about like seven or eight looks that Gaga wore throughout the entirety of the night. So first up is this area look. Now, as I mentioned, just with Kiki Palmer, you know, the area style, which is these big sort of hipped dresses that are high, low, and they're sort of like jackets. This is the moment. Now Gaga wore a plethora of face masks, and this first one, somebody said, is giving very sandy cheeks from SpongeBob SquarePants vibes, and like, couldn't agree more. It's giving me very astronaut, aerospace, NASA vibes. And like, you know, not super duper mad about it. I feel like her Chromatica era is meant to be very like alien and out there and spacey. I actually think that this look perfectly channels that. I think that the little face mask that looks like a fishbowl on her head also sort of gives those vibes. And she's wearing these shoes by Kleiser, which is a brand that she's worn a lot recently. They're square-toed little platform boots. I feel like there's sort of a connection between Ariana and Gaga. Like, they both were wearing these square-toe heels. And I feel like that was maybe a reference to each other and, like, Rain On Me and Chromatica. Now, we should also note that the choice of silver here was, in reality, a reference to the Moon Man, which is the award that is given out at the VMAs. So in a way, Gaga is sort of playing into the idea of the VMAs, the history of it, while also sort of channeling Chromatica and that out there space age sort of style. So I'm, I'm happy with this. Do I think the look is the best one I've ever seen from her? No, but I feel like the referencing and the inspiration is sort of smart and sweet and a good ode. Then Gaga came out and she was wearing a Christopher John Rogers Fall 2020 Baja Blast silk taffeta look. And I was obsessed, obsessed in love. It was beautiful, it was stunning, it was gorgeous, it was wonderful, it was everything I think we needed. This dress is sort of this fantastic ball gown where the waist is sort of nipped in with a sort of tight belt, but it's not really a belt, it's like a sash sort of cut. And then it has a nice little over the top sort of ridiculous dramatic shoulder, which is very Christopher John Rogers. I feel like a lot of his work, the shoulders and arms and sleeves are very sort of avant-garde and crazy and kooky, but it works. And then you just have this full ass skirt that is just giving you very 18, 19, 17th century style. It's just very big and bulky and bold and you have to like pick it up when you run with it or walk with it. It's just very like old world, sort of glamorous, ridiculous styling. I think it's beautiful. I think the color is also fantastic. I feel like Chromatica, again, it's about these like punchy sort of colors that are really in your face and vibrant. And I feel like if you're ever gonna do in your face vibrant colors. Christopher John Rogers is the person to go to for that. I also have to note, I'm obsessed with this mask. Gaga's masks throughout the entirety of the VMAs were crazy and ridiculous and over the top, which I thought was really cool. I think very few celebrities really, really have been doing masks in a way that gets everybody else to be like, wow, that looks so cool, that looks so amazing. Like masks are, you know, a moment. Like it can be cool and chic and, crazy and ridiculous to wear a mask. Like that's what celebrities are supposed to be doing is like putting on these shows to help us all be safe, to help us understand the masks aren't scary, but in reality something to help us. And I feel like Gaga here with her gigantic tusk mask, I'm getting very Ella fantasy. You know what I mean? Like it's great, it's beautiful, it's stunning. I love it, it's wonderful. I feel like the mixture of this sort of harsh tusk with the grandeur of this Christopher John Rogers dress is everything I wanted and needed. Next up, Gaga wore this Iris Van Herpen look. It's this sort of avant-garde 
style. You know, it has this sort of different 3D laser cut sort of going on here. It's sort of like a cocktail dress that juts out at the hips and, you know, descends in sort of like a fringe laser cut style. There's silvers and light blues and, you know, dark blues and reds all sort of jumping out of it. She's again wearing these sort of pleaser heels that have the square toe. So, you know, it's a little bit crazy, a little bit avant-garde, a little bit out there, a little bit you know, gaga. The one thing that I'm not absolutely obsessed with is the face mask here. I understand that they're trying to like reference pink and chromatica, and pink seems to be the color of the chromatica era, but I do feel like maybe had we gotten a mask in like silver or blue or red or any of the colors that match the actual look, I would have been a little bit more on board with the mask. I feel like something about the mask just takes away from the rest of the iris look, like I'm drawn to the mask. And that's great, but the color choices, not my favorite here. But in reality, it's great to see a little bit of an Iris Van Herpen look going on from Gaga. Nice to see, nice to know, and hope to see more in the future. There were a few performance looks from Gaga. The first one is this green look, and while I don't love all like the bondage style, like I get it, it's performance, it makes sense, I understand, I'm not gonna be mad about it. But the mask, oh? My god, it like lit up in different colors and like when she sang it would like zizz or like would make like a circle It was very cool. And again, this is what I mean like masks can be so cool People are like not thinking hard enough and not going that extra step to really make masks Different and avant-garde and ridiculous and something that you know, we can actually make cool like Honestly, I'm gonna be very very honest. There's a lot of bad things about coronavirus, but fashion wise and style wise this is a moment where the masks are almost mandatory, like for the most part, if you're a good human being and you're running a government properly, it should be mandatory. This is the time for fashion designers and costume designers to really go through it, to make it a thing, to give us the moment, like no other time in history, I mean, less than like 100 years is a whole another pandemic, are we gonna have the opportunity to really put some work in with these masks and make them sartorial styles that will be remembered for years and years and years to come. Celebrities, follow Gaga's rules and ideas here because she's making moves and she's making moments for masks. A look that she wore when she was performing Rain On Me was very reminiscent of her Rain On Me look. It had the purple, it had the style, it still had the mask with the zizzes and the buzzes and the blinds. So that was cool, but you know, it wasn't my favorite again. And her last performance look was the sort of like pink and purple bodysuit that like emphasized the breasts and the thighs. And again, like it was giving me very, um, it's giving me like very veins and muscles, but like in chromatica pink and purple. It was, it was very that, you know what I mean? So it was interesting again, but I've seen better from Gaga and I'd like to see better in the future as well. Then Gaga wore this Candace Cuoco silver, you know, shoulder cape moment. In reality, the silver was very, you know, interesting. It was cool, it was different, but I feel like, again, I've seen better from Gaga. It wasn't the most amazing look ever, and, you know, it, it had a moment. It was there. There was a, you know, face mask and a headpiece that had little silver things jumping out of it. I'll take it. It was, like, not the worst look of the entirety of the seven or eight, so she's there. She happened. Final look that we will be discussing from Lady Gaga was this iconic Valentino Haute Couture coat. Now, I'm pretty positive Lady Gaga is doing a fragrance with Valentino, or she's a face of Valentino, or something like that, so this collaboration makes sense. Now, she wore this fully sequined body suit, which is from the Fall 2020 Haute Couture show, or collection, and these white, you know, big old platform heels with the square toes, and she wore a matching silver face mask that went with the bodysuit, which I thought was brilliant. Like, this is what I want. I want it to match and make sense and be sort of coordinated. But the most exciting part of the look was the feather coat that she wore. This is like one of my favorite pieces from the entirety of the Valentino Haute Couture show, and Gaga gave it to me. Now, the coat was really, really long and big and dramatic and tall, and this actually is the coat from the show. Like this wasn't a custom made look for Gaga. It was definitely the one from the show, but it had these beautiful lines through it. So you had like the feathers and the sleeves and then it would be lined and then you had more feathers and then line and then had more feathers. And then it was so long, like you could see it dragging after her. And I think that's like couture, that's dramatic. It's over the top. It's beautiful, it's stunning, it's ridiculous. 
Valentino, Lady Gaga's team, Nicola Formichetti, Pierre Paolo Vicioli. The girls put it together in a way that I was very pleased, blessed, felt really good about. It was dramatic, it was avant-garde. I think it made us all think a lot more about what mask and style could be in the age of coronavirus. So thank you to everybody involved in all of these looks because it was one of the only things pulling me through that night. Next up is Machine Gun Kelly, and he wore this pink turtleneck sleeveless look and honestly i thought it was really cool i thought it was very interesting it was a little bit poppy a little bit neon a little bit colorful which i kind of like for machine gun kelly here the pants not my favorite fit but also not terrible like it's not a bad you know pants normally i think pants are very hard to get right he wore a pearl necklace that had like a little you know the the bull ring nose ring situation on it as well which i feel like worked it was sort of light and airy and feminine which worked with this pink sort of look and then i couldn't see the blazer on but you know what i'll take it it's fine and these shoes i don't know what these shoes are but i'm very interested in them like very rarely do i want like a flat dress shoe but if i was gonna buy a flat dress shoe these might be a contender. They looked really good. They looked really interesting. It was great. I love that it was all pink. And then you had the black at the bottom and the shoe. It made sense. It was worth it. It was very cool, very chic. Good for Machine Gun Kelly. Machine Gun Kelly also wore a green and black sort of zebra striped sweater with a little black pant and some sort of like you know, apron at the back or the front. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It's also not the best thing I've ever seen in my entire life. So I'll take it. But the next look that he wore was a simple sort of white tank top and then these black gigantic like palazzo bleached pants. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I was like, wait, why is there no close up of these? I love these. I want these. I would wear these. Like, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It worked. I'm very happy. Machine Gun Kelly, you know, he's doing it. The fact, whoever's a stylist, good for you. You're doing a good job. I'm proud of you. Next up was Maluma, and he was wearing Balmain, this neon yellow highlighter suit. In reality, I actually don't mind it. It feels very sort of 80s. It feels very, you know, reminiscent of Olivier Roussin's Balmain. It was very on brand, very aesthetically in line with the brand. It, it made sense. I, I got it. The little button down shirt that was sort of transparent underneath was good. I liked the size of the blazer because it allowed for movement, but also wasn't buttoned up. So it wasn't like creating a weird sort of A-line shape. And then the pants, a little bit baggy for me, but again, like performance wear, I get it. The one thing that upset me was the sneakers the white sneakers. It wasn't really getting that part. I didn't know why we needed like a little Nike running sneaker for this moment. Like again, I understand performances, but like, you know, the girls are wearing heels. The girls are turning looks. The girls are really like doing it. Give me a little bit something, a little bit drama, a little bit of a boot. I believe you can do it. So for the future, come on, come on. There also was Madison Beer and she is wearing this Mugler spring summer 2020 look. And now again, I don't really feel like Madison Beer is somebody that has ever turned a look, like ever, no offense to Madison Beer if she's watching, but like I've never seen it. So, you know, I wouldn't believe it, but I think this looks beautiful on her. It's very classic Mugler. It has these beautiful sleeves and there's like a cutout in the inside of the arm from the sleeves. It sort of comes up to the neck and you know, celebrates the decolletage, which again, very Mugler, very, very sexy. I like the fact that it's sort of like cut like a bodysuit and there's a transparent skirt over it that shows some sort of seamage that allows you to actually see a little bit of thigh. And I like the cut of it. I think it's really, really short, but to me that's very Mugler, sexualized, sexy, you know, risque, which I think really works here. And also she has long legs, so she can wear it and literally it's like legs for days, months, weeks, years, millennia, eons. And I think the shoes were sort of perfect. Like they don't take away from the dress, but I think they accentuate the fact that this is meant to be like sexy. It's a big sort of platform. It's a little bit strappy. It shows off everything. I think it's really strong. I think it really works very well. Madison Beer, congratulations. Like you did a great job. I'm really proud of you. I was not expecting this. Like keep it going. Next up was Miley Cyrus and she is also wearing Mugler. Mugler really seemed to have a hold on the entirety of this red carpet. Now she's wearing a finale or like an end of collection look from the fall 2020 collection. It's a transparent strapless dress that has a slit up one side I believe and they're sort of these paillettes. Now if you don't know a paillette it's essentially like a sort of big piece of plastic or metal or whatever that's embroidered onto a dress so it sort of creates 
a fringe style, but it's more of like a shape. So that's sort of what you're seeing and possibly seeing in the reflection here because I can't actually see an embroidery that would work and reflect in this manner. She's wearing a pair of matching opera gloves that go up to like the bicep. And again, I think it's really cheap. I think it's really brilliant. I think it perfectly ties in. And also she's wearing a sort of black bandeau and a little black piece of underwear. I think it works really well. The shoes, you know, they're there, whatever. They don't take away nor do they accentuate fully the look, but I think this is good for Miley. I think this is exciting. I think this is what we sort of need. It's like her staying in her lane. And also, it's sexy. It's a little bit gothic. It's a little bit dramatic. It's very on brand for her, and I like it. I think it's smart. I think it's cool. I think it works. This is what I want to see in the future for Miley Cyrus. Please and thank you. During her performance, she wore a really sort of simple black dress that again had a slit up the side so you could see a lot of thigh. She wore some like jewelry, it was very heavy jewelry, and eventually she like stripped off the skirt and it was just like a little bodysuit underneath and then she was on a disco ball in reference to like the Wrecking Ball song. Wasn't my favorite look, but again, performance wise i get it i understand it and i do actually weirdly enough think that it's different than a lot of performance looks that we see i feel like very rarely do people like perform in like a dress 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 sort of situation i understand it wasn't like really a dress but the silhouette it was giving at the beginning was very dressy and sort of slinky and sexy and i feel like that worked really really well and i think the drama of stripping off the skirt to sort of give a bodysuit Again, it worked. I thought it was good. Good for Miley. Thank you very much. Next up is Nicole Richie, and she is wearing the designer Kong Tree. Now, listen, this was a risk. So I want to say, Nicole Richie, congratulations. You took a risk. Proud of you. That's great. Did the risk pay off? No. I don't think this key lime green is the best. It's not the worst, but it's also not the best. And something about the draping of this dress with the one shoulder and all of the pulling on the skirt, I don't think it's the most flattering look in the entire world. And I get the train, I get a little bit of a train, but again, I feel like the asymmetry of the train is sort of weird and you already have a lot going on with the shoulder and the skirt and the train just sort of adds more to look at and I feel like I'm at an all you can eat buffet of Nicole Richie and it's like, I've had enough, I feel sick, I'm good, thank you. And then the waitress who is Nicole Richie keeps piling on the chef's specialty who is also Nicole Richie onto my plate which has Nicole Richie's face on it and it's just a lot, like I get it, thank you so much, I really respect it but I'm good. And then I feel like as I'm leaving the restaurant, Nicole Richie, who is also the hostess, is giving me dirty looks because I didn't finish my meal. You know what I mean? This is giving me all of that and I don't want all of that. I'm good, I'm on a diet. Thank you so much. No. Nicole, in the future, a little bit less uh, and a little bit more like chic risk. Next up is Sophia Carson and she's wearing John Batista Volley. It's a simple, Jean Baptiste Diwali couture gown. I mean, people are gonna be like, that's not simple, but for me, the shit I see every day, it's simple. It's an asymmetrical bust that is sort of draped and pulled. There is a full skirt that is quite long and dramatic, and it's a puffed up, draped, big old cloudy peplum of fabric. Here's the thing. I really like the color. I think the color red here is striking on her. I think it works. I'm sorry that I'm showing you everything. It works. It makes sense. I think it's cool. It's interesting. But the peplum, as much as, again, I appreciate the risk. I don't think the peplum is the best thing in the entire world. I think it creates like a little bit of a weird shape. Maybe if there was like a high-low involved in it where like it was just a train at the back and the front was sort of exposed, that could work. That could have been cool. I also understand her stylist is not going to take a pair of scissors to some haute couture. So like again, I get it. But the other thing is the Jamati Savali look had like a crazy mask and I think at least for the red carpet the mask would have been really cool. I think it would have been avant-garde. I think it would have been different. I understand like you want to see your face and all but like do the mask and then throw it off and then you have two pictures. It's different, you know, but the mask would have been really cool. It would have added that sort of risk factor that would have pulled it all together because the, the makeup and the hair is very clean and then the look is sort of like drama and like you know, out there. So I feel like I needed a pull together here somewhere. Please and thank you. But again, a risk 
was taken. I appreciate that. Hoping for a little bit more of a risk being pulled off in the future from Sophia. Then there was the weekend and he is the final look that we will be talking about for this VMA's 2020 red carpet roast. He is wearing, I don't know who, but this look is definitely a reference to his looks from the music video for Blinding Lights. Now the makeup I think is really good. Again, I don't really talk about makeup that much, but I feel like it adds in this sort of like punky aesthetic. I like the red blazer. I think it's cool. I like the black gloves, but the rest of the look, I mean, between like the derby shoes and the black and white and the black pants and the black shirt underneath, those are a little bit meh. They're fine. You know, it works. And I feel like you want to put the emphasis on the red jacket and the black gloves. I know that I've seen The weekend in Balenciaga quite a bit. I mean, it was for like a GQ shoot, but I'd love to see The weekend sort of step out and be a little bit more drama with the clothing. I feel like me maybe a ridiculous shoulder jacket could be really, really cool. Adding some sort of like structured look that's a little bit avant-garde for The weekend could really work in my opinion, and I'd like to see it in the future. So here's hoping. But that is the end of our VMA's 2020 red carpet roast. You guys usually want me to talk about a best and a worst at the end of the video. So the worst look, I'm sorry, has to go to Georgia Cat. That Versace dress is just, it's rough. It's ugly. It's fugly. I hate it. Can't stand it. For the best look, it's really a toss up between Lady Gaga's Valentino Haute Couture look and Lady Gaga's beautiful Christopher John Rogers dress. Like I can't decide between the two because they're both so amazing, both so ridiculous, both so avant-garde and over the top. So those are my best and worst. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys on the next one and TTYL.